almonds are used in a wide variety of baked goods. Today, almond expert Priscilla Martell is here to school us on this incredibly versatile nut. Then I'm going to incorporate almonds into two very special recipes, almond crunch ice cream cake and blanc mange. Plus, baker Matt Lewis makes his tantalizing almond sandwich cookies. All today on Martha Bakes. Almonds have grown in popularity due in part to their ability to be transformed into so many, many products. Today, Priscilla Martell, consultant and expert on all things almond, is here to shed light on this fascinating nut. Uh, welcome, Priscilla. It's nice to see you Very again. Very nice to be here, Martha. What sparked your interest in almonds, of all things? I was researching Mediterranean sweets in Morocco, and it must be 20, 25 years ago. And I saw a beautiful display with all these different almonds, and I realized it was a, a food product with a huge story that we didn't know much about. And yet uh, we grow more almonds in America than we anywhere do. else in the world. It's shocking. 80% yes. of the world's almonds come from California. Yeah. So you chose the right profession. I did, didn't I, by yeah. accident, but yeah. I really love them. What uh, is the growing season for almonds? The trees are planted whenever. It takes three years for a tree to bear fruit. Uh -huh. And then they bloom in the winter time, February and March, and then late March, April, they start to form this fruit, which is this green fuzzy pod, and they're related to peaches, so it's yeah. a good thing to think about. And then as the season evolves, coming toward the summer, August and September, they get fully formed and the outside green part dries out. That's more of that's a green like stage, but there you go. So that's no. the hull on the outside. And then and that then falls you, off. That, that starts to fall off and also is taken off during harvesting. And then you have the almond. Now this almond is a soft shell. So it looks just like a peach pit. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Remarkably. This is a nice California variety, non-pareil. It's very golden in color, has a little bit of ridge, so it's good when you roast. You know, the seasonings will stick on it. Right. Um, another one that we have here, this little one called Mission, that's the secret ingredient in candy bars, not only because of its size, you know, you can see them sitting across oh, the yeah. top of certain kinds of candy bars, but they have a real bright, nutty flavor. So when you go to the diet. grocery store, you find almonds that look like this. This is a raw, unblanched almond, which means it has the skin, and here's your blanched almond where okay. the skin's been removed. so I've been, been using a lot of those in cooking. Mm -hmm. And then you have your sliced almonds with the skin, and you can get also get sliced without. almonds without the skin. Exactly. And then you can also get slivered almonds. So many people are eating almond butter. I like the taste of almond butter. I love it. And it's yeah. a secret ingredient in a lot of baking where you can add a small amount of almond butter with your dairy butter and bring out a rich, toasty flavor that might not oh. be there. Oh, so good. chocolate chip cookies, things, or even shortbread, you wouldn't necessarily expect it. And then what about the Italian almonds? Are these grown in Italy? Those are from Italy. There's yeah. different varieties. You can see the big different shapes of them. Uh, they get into the U.S. perhaps for snacking. It's just, the industry is very small there. And, and what about the Marcona? Where Marconas, do they come from? Those come from Spain, and they're also grown in California now. They're very oily and delicious. It, a secret is to, you can toast any almond in oil. You coat them in oil oh. on a, like 350. Uh, maybe eight to 12 minutes, and you'll get a little bit more of that characteristic oh. in your almond. Oh, they're very delicious. Yeah. So what's the difference between almond cream and almond milk? So there are products called almond oh, cream, cream, which may be thickened. But for me, if I make a one-to-one -one water to almond ratio, so a cup of almonds and a cup of water, That'll that's more of cream. a cream. Oh, I see. And then we have flour, of course, too, and you can buy almond flour, or you can make your own. You can. If it's a small amount, you can use a rasp grater, oh. and you get that really fine powder. There's also nut mills that are made to do that. Also, you can grind it in your food processor, but there I prefer to add a tiny bit of sugar, and that helps keep down the friction that builds up. You, the oil you don't want to grease it. Greasy. Exactly. Right. And then and this is with the skins so on? So this is with the skins, and that's pretty fine. The thing with the skins, they have a little bit of an astringency, which may be beneficial, mm -hmm. but if you're making a French macaron, you want the finest. And you that's like a good that. fine one. Yeah. And or my favorite skin. is the next dish. Remember, were you in the Martha Land? Yeah, that's Martha <laughs> Land. That's almond paste. So I, I had this mold. You, you've surely used these. Oh, uh, yes. And they're used in Scandinavian countries, but throughout the European style baking. And I'm just going to do a quickie where you can see this wonderful pattern that will come out when we just quickly unmold it. 
Yeah, it takes on beautiful shapes. Doesn't oh, yeah. it, though? Oh, gorgeous. A little bird yeah. and the flowers. I like to put this on top of a butter cookie shape this Oh, way. that would be very pretty. Yeah, love letter cookies, I call them. And then, of course, you've brought some amazing examples of marzipan. They make the almond paste into animals they can do, vegetables they can do, fruits, of course. And this one I thought was oh. especially interesting because the peaches and almonds are related, yeah. and that would be the almond. Oh, yeah, yeah, so beautiful. And then, of course, the wedding. The wedding confetti. The, yes. At every wedding, you have to have your candy-coated almonds. So pretty. So thank you very, very much. Your enthusiasm for almonds is certainly contagious. My and pleasure. thank you for all your knowledge. Oh, my pleasure. Very interesting. Welcome to my world. Thank you. <laughs> my older brother, Eric, used to drive an ice cream truck as a summer job. And when we heard that little bell ringing coming down Elm Place, we all ran out to the street for our toasted almond bars. And today we're going to make an almond crunch ice cream cake that brings back all those fabulous memories. What you do have to have on hand are very good blanched almonds. Toast them in about a 350 degree oven until they're golden brown. You're going to grind them with two thirds of a cup of cake flour. This is just all purpose flour mixed with a little bit of cornstarch. And now grind these. Really kind of pulverize them, about 30 seconds. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks good and uh, nice and powdery. It looks like almond flour. That's what we want. Now, the rest of the cake. First, beat six egg whites. Beat these until they're frothy, then add a half a cup of sugar and a pinch of salt. I'll add the salt now and just get these nice and frothy. I've already buttered my pans. These are seven inch cake pans, two of them. I've buttered them generously, fitted the bottoms with a piece of parchment paper, and then buttered the parchment paper. So these are ready for the cakes. And you can also preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So see how nice and fluffy these have gotten already? Now add your half a cup of granulated sugar. I like to add it in a slow, steady stream. And you're going to beat these until they're stiff and glossy, satiny and smooth. It takes about four minutes or so. So there, these are ready to ultimately fold into the cake batter. So we'll just keep these on the side here. Add your six egg yolks. So these get beaten until, they always say, like a creamy ribbon. Add two teaspoons of vanilla to your six egg yolks and a half a cup more sugar. These are going to get thick and a paler yellow color. So I think these are pretty much done. You can see a nice creamy ribbon. And now fold the egg whites into the egg yolks and going around in a matter like that. You can see how much lighter this becomes. This is a very light cake. And now you can add your ground almond flour mixture. And then divide evenly between your two pans right into your oven, 18 to 20 minutes in the upper half of your oven. So now I'm going to make the almond crunch. So one cup of blanched sliced almonds six tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of water. Mix this together. This will give you almond crunch. And it goes into a 325 degree preheated oven for approximately 25 minutes. Just spread this in a thin layer. 25 minutes, 325 degrees. The cake's all done. Look how pretty they are. So we're going to cut the two layers into four layers. And uh, you need, if you want a very professional looking job, this is a three and a half inch, seven inch in diameter springform pan. Line this with a tall collar all the way down to the bottom of parchment paper. These cakes will be dropped down inside here and layered so that when you unmold it, it's a very cylindrical cake. First thing you have to do though is make your sugar syrup a half a cup of sugar, a third of a cup of water, two tablespoons of almond liqueur. Heat this liquid until the sugar is melted. And for an additional 
little boost of almond, add a half a teaspoon of the very best almond extract. There. Not too much. It can get a little bit bitter if you add too much of the extract. You just want to, as they say, zhuzh it up. That's how you make the syrup. I have one that's already cooled. It's nice to add the syrup while the cakes are turned like this on a rack over a parchment lined baking sheet. This way any drips will go down onto the rack. What you're doing with the syrup is just adding a lot more flavor and moisture to your layers. So the first layer goes down into the pan. There, can you see that? Now a layer of vanilla ice cream, gently beaten with a flat beater to soften it to this consistency, like heavy, heavy whipped cream. And then just spread it with your offset. Now this is that lovely almond crunch. It's about a half a cup of almond crunch. Now your next layer. Another layer of ice cream. Another sprinkling of nuts. And your next layer. Another two big scoops. Now I started with four pints of ice cream, but I think you could get away with three pints. Some more almonds. Now I invert this one right onto the top. Wrap this with plastic wrap and transfer to the freezer for at least one hour. Overnight is fine. And here's our cake. Open the little clamps. See how this clamp releases the ring? Lift that off. Peel this off. And now I have one other little secret for decorating. I like to insert under the cake a few pieces of parchment paper like this. This will keep our cake stand clean. I've whipped up three quarters of a cup of heavy cream mixed with about two tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. Just spread the cream all over the cake. Take the rest of your almond crunch and put it all the way around the top. No one will believe that you made this yourself. Enjoy. One of my all-time favorite gelatin desserts is called Blanc Mange. In French, blanc means white and manger means to eat. So today I've decided to make that blanc mange with cinnamon steeped fresh almond milk and heavy cream. Warm the almonds to develop more flavor. There are four cups of whole almonds that have been lightly toasted in a 300 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Cool them and then grind them. So now these almonds are transferred from the baking sheet directly to a food processor. Buy blanched whole almonds for this. Grind these up until quite fine. Now this is going to get mixed with four cups of whole milk, one and a half cups of water. We're making almond milk. Two cinnamon sticks, two or three inches long, one cup of sugar. So bring this almost to a boil, and we have one that's already hot. So I'll just move this over here. And now this has already come to a boil, a low boil. Now add your almonds. Just pour them carefully into the hot milk. Stir them in. We want the almonds to steep in this hot sugar milk so that all the flavor of the almonds leaches out into the hot milk. Pour this into an eight cup measure, cover well, and refrigerate for 24 hours. The longer this mixture steeps, the more flavor the blanc mange will have. This recipe makes enough liquid to fill two two to two and a half cup molds or one four to four and a half cup mold. Fill it with iced water to get them really chill. And we'll drain these right before we're going to fill them. This is our liquid that has chilled overnight, 24 hours is best to really develop the flavor. Scrape it all out into a cheesecloth lined strainer. It takes quite a while for 
uh, this to drain through the cheesecloth. You can help it along by stirring it with a rubber spatula or a wooden spoon, and it should be dripping down into the bowl, which it is doing. But this is gonna take a little longer, so I have a swap out. I'll just push this aside. And the thickening agent for these blanc mange is gelatin. So we have two tablespoons of gelatin, a half a cup of heavy cream. Put that right into your little saucepan. Sprinkle the gelatin on top. What we wanna do is dissolve the gelatin in the cream. Let that just sit for a couple minutes. I found that um, this strainer is a little bit big and it was sitting in the strained almond milk, so I just put it on two wooden spoons. You can do all kinds of things to help yourself along. Still has a lot of milk in it and you can squeeze this out. You'll probably get another cup of liquid out of this. Pour this excess liquid into your heavy cream. Bring this to a low heat just to dissolve the gelatin. That's what will set your blanc mange. It looks like every bit of gelatin is dissolved. You want your blanc mange to be smooth and jelly-like, no lumps whatsoever. Scrape this into your cold almond milk. Now you can take the ice water out of your mold. and ladle your mixture right into your molds. Chilling the molds with iced water is a traditional French way of making sure that the molds will unmold. Now these get wrapped with a piece of plastic wrap, pressing directly onto the surface and then put into the refrigerator to chill, preferably overnight. So to unmold your blanc mange, quickly dip the mold into hot water, or if you're a little cautious like I am, just loosen the edges with an offset just around the top edge. And I invert this right onto my serving platter. It's a pedestal with a little edge on it. I find that that's good for something like a blanc mange. It might just pop down by itself, but put a very hot, ooh, this is like boiling hot, use rubber gloves, and just put this over the mold. This will help loosen the pudding. <gasps> Perfection. Isn't that gorgeous? Now these are sugared currants, those beautiful white currants. I just love the white on white. It's served with beautiful almond tweels. And although this is not a baked dessert, it certainly belongs in your dessert repertoire. Almond Blanc Mange, a dessert to remember. Known for reviving classic American recipes, bakery owner Matt Lewis feels it's time for peanut butter to move aside and to let almond butter take the lead in his updated recipe for this time-tested sandwich cookie. Welcome back. Thank you so much so for nice having to me. See yeah, you. Good to see you. So this cookie is an almond sandwich cookie with <laughs> almond butter, right? I have a little bit of an almond butter obsession. Okay, well that's good. These are yes. already toasted. These are already toasted, okay. so it's just some raw almonds we toasted for about 10 to 15 minutes. And we're gonna put the whole batch in here. Oh, okay. And you're gonna grind them up to almond flour. Almond flour, oh good, so I'm making my own flour. I'm making your own flour, making your own This makes flour. a racket, so I'm gonna stand back from my microphone. Okay. Right? <laughs> so this think? is actually perfect. Yeah. Oh, so so we're gonna dump the whole thing back into the bowl. Okay. Mm, very almondy. And then we're gonna use these almonds three times. So the first time we're gonna measure out a cup and a half right into here. And then the whole cookie isn't just almond flour. It wouldn't really come together. You do need a little bit of all purpose. Okay. We're gonna do three and a quarter cups. I'll do that for you. Yeah. So these make a lot of cookies. Oh boy, how many? 36 oh, wow. sandwiches. Oh wow, okay. It's a um, decent amount. And we're just gonna put three quarter teaspoons of salt. You'll be baking for a while, but your kitchen will smell good. And then we're just gonna kind of whisk this up. Once this is all mixed together, the next step is we're going to cream um, sifted confectioner sugar with two and a quarter cups of butter. This could take, depending on the type of mixer you have, oh, a couple minutes. You just want this to completely come together until it's nice and creamy. Okay. I also like to chill the butter. 
It right. just makes it super simple to work with. All those cookies, only two large egg yolks? Only two large egg wow. yolks. Wow, so it's really a shortbread. It's a real shortbread. I don't like my shortbread to have a lot of give. I kind of like the snap. So we're gonna go ahead and add the egg yolks. And then one teaspoon of vanilla. Once this all comes together, we're gonna add the flour, but I like to add it in a couple batches so it doesn't go everywhere. And also you don't wanna overmix this. If you overmix this, it's where kind of you lose some of the texture of the shortbread. So. And if you have a bigger mixer, it's not as bad, but like this is why we put it in batches so it doesn't make a volcano of flour. So we're gonna divide this in half. We're just gonna form a log. It makes it super easy to cut out the cookies. And then once it's in the refrigerator and it's chilled overnight, you could pop it in the freezer if you don't wanna use it right away, or you can slice and bake the cookies, which we'll do. All right, so we're gonna do two things. We're actually gonna make um, some almond butter. Okay, all the rest of the almonds. All the rest of the almonds. We scooped out about a half a cup of almonds for a sheet tray. And the rest of that five cups of almonds. Is gonna go in and make almond okay. butter. And then just put it on. Just put it on it. Honestly, like if you have a food processor, this is the easiest way to make it. It takes a while, but it's great to make your own almond butter. And I'm gonna unwrap the dough and roll it in these almonds. Oh, look how nice. Oh, so you so roll it. So it just gives it. a little coating oh, nice. and another, like, another texture, and it's another good way to use the almonds. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to cut the cookies out. So I rolled it in the almonds. We're going to cut off the end so we get a really nice, clean, flat surface. How's our butter? Look! We it's got almond butter. It's actually almond butter. So that only took maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Now we're ready to bake the cookies. We're gonna put them in a 350 degree oven for about 18 to 20 minutes, oh, or just okay. until they're brown. The transformation into almond butter. Look at that. Mm, he says. Mm, good, Perfect, right? perfect. Okay. And now we'll make our almond butter filling, which oh. we're gonna put in between the two shortbreads to make oh, a sandwich. Oh, this isn't cookie. it. No, we're not done. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is the finished cookie. Yeah, it's got all the texture on it. Oh yeah. So in the bowl, we've got a half a cup of sifted confectioner sugar and then some butter, about half a stick. And a half a teaspoon of salt. salt. And I'm going to scoop in one cup of the freshly made almond butter we just made. Put all the almond butter into here. If we want, we have a little bit of extra, obviously a lot of extra. Okay. We could thin it out if we want almost like an icing or a filling for a cake. Oh, you could absolutely a use cake this. Filling. Yeah. I have and some already made. It's already made and we're gonna go ahead and make the cookie sandwich. Okay, now. so this is the inside of the cookie or the bottom and that's the top. So uh, how much would you put on? Like that much? Perfect. Okay. Yeah, don't skimp, right? Don't skimp. Now at the bakery, is this all done by hand? Oh, everything's still done by hand oh, at the bakery. Okay. okay. And then we're gonna make a perfect little sandwich. We're just gonna squeeze it down until it comes out almost to the edge. Oh, they came out perfect. So well, everything cute. that you make, Matt, is oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> in my book. And that is what you will serve with ice cream, with sorbet, or just by themselves. You've worked magic again with this reinvention of the classic nut butter cookie. Matt, thank you very much thanks. for coming. Thanks. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. These are some of my favorite things that I do with extra almond butter. Instead of a peanut butter and jelly, an almond butter and jelly sandwich. Also ice cream, it's like a perfect topping. Also, I'm trying to be healthy, is I'll put together bananas, almond milk, blueberries, and acai. And then just scoop this out into a bowl. Sprinkle with some flax and hemp seed. And top with almond butter. So these are just a few uses for almond butter. Experiment, do whatever you want, but almond butter is one of my favorite things.